<laughs> I still make pickled eggs. They're so yummy. I have a, a whole batch of my girlfriend's eggs at home. No medication, just meditation. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Alan Perry, uh, and welcome to Series Scovilles. Uh, I'm pinch hitting for our regular host, uh, Zach Hurdle. Uh, this is a talk where we burn our mouths while burning through hot topics, but hopefully don't burn bridges along the way. And our fourth guest here is Dr. Ellis Jensen. He's a professor of exercise physiology and has been at UVU since 2011. Uh, he's apparently a big outdoorsman and has developed a taste for the spiciest of foods. Uh, Ellis, welcome to the show. And on that note, how are you feeling about spicy food in general? In general, I like it, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see if that uh, remains <laughs> after this we're done. This is a little specific. <laughs> that's, that's true, that's true. We have 10 different sauces here, and uh, we're going to go through and ask you a question and eat a sauce at, uh, at each point. For our first one here, this is the Valentina's Black Label it's from Guadalajara, Mexico. It comes in at 1,000 Scoville. Let's take our number one here, and we'll give this a try. Make sure you get a little bit of extra sauce there. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Mmm. Pretty good, right? I like that we don't have any bones to dodge. Right, right. So that's nice. They're all chicken nuggets. Um, tell us a little about yourself. How did you arrive at UVU? Give us some backstory <clears throat> in Utah, how you ended up in North Carolina, and then back here again. I used to go to work with my mom at Utah Technical College and I'd sit in her office while she'd teach classes and then uh, I came here while she was Utah Valley State College. She was in the nursing department and I always loved this place. I just really enjoyed it. So very cool. I always wanted to come back when it became a university. I thought, yep, let's see if we can do it. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about uh, how you ended up in North Carolina. Uh, well, I was uh, at BYU, I was studying um, some met metabolism research, mm -hmm. and my mentor, Dr. Will Winder, did a lot of research with Linus Dome, and I was the fourth student from his lab to go to Linus Dome's lab, so okay. I just kind of did the uh, normal, <laughs> the, yeah, if you like metabolic research, move up to the next That's the way you stage. go, just yeah. sliding right along. Great, so we're going to move on to the second uh, sauce here. Our second sauce is Tabasco Chipotle. Uh, it's from Avery Island, Louisiana. It comes in at 2,000 Scovilles. Lather up your number two, make sure you get a good amount of sauce on it. You know, something I noticed about even the most delicate ones, it's not like they have a frosty, cool feeling. Right, right. <laughs> you know, they still are spicy. <laughs> All right, here we go. You like Chipotle? Yeah. Awesome. So uh, you're an exercise scientist, right? If I'm looking to get into shape quickly and efficiently, uh, what, what have you found in your experience or research that's something I could stick with most consistently? Whatever you like. <laughs> Generally, what we say is the best type of exercise is the one you'll do. They all work. They so all work. Pick something that makes you really happy. My favorite thing is when I'm mountain biking with my friends and I say, can't believe I'm getting healthier right now. <laughs> I would do this if it was a little bit bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> so your recommendation is find fun. something that's that, that's fun and that you'd be willing to do if it was a little unhealthy for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, I, I play a little basketball here at UVU. There's a group that plays at noon and they're playing today, which is right after this. So we'll see how is that goes. Is it a little bit bad for you? It is. Well, it's certainly bad for you after you've gone through and eaten 10 super spicy things. So we'll, <laughs> we'll have to see. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're on to number three. This is El Yucateco Caribbean from Yucatan, Mexico. It comes in 5,500 Scoville. So a little bit of a jump from the last one. Yeah. Okay. This is number three. Yucateco. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> you Just don't use it like chapstick. What do you think of that one? That was nice. Yeah. I liked it. Not too bad. Let's start with a little bit about your personal life, get to know you. I hear you're a gardener, an egg pickler, and a hacky sacker. I think myself and the audience need to know about these things. Well, I'm converting my whole yard to permaculture. So I've been gardening a lot, indoors and outdoors. I spent all day gardening indoors yesterday. 
Hacky Sacker. Man, if you just stop by the exercise science foyer and catch us in a game of hack and join us, <laughs> you'll understand everything about that. It's obviously fun. And then, uh, what was the other one? Oh, uh, egg, pickler. egg Pickler. Well, I was out mountain biking with our department chair and another friend in Price, and it was really adventurous. We made a drive out, and we stopped to use the bathroom at Maverick, and there were pickled eggs when I came out and a pickled sausage. I bought one of each, decided I'd try them. Pickled egg? Great. <laughs> pickled sausage? That's a terrible idea. <laughs> Pickling oatmeal and meat? Anyway, so I still make pickled eggs. They're so yummy. I have a, a whole batch of my girlfriend's eggs at home. Awesome. Uh, I mean, my, my chicken's eggs. Your, chi Those your chicken's eggs. eggs. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit different uh, the other way around. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want anyone to good. misunderstand. <laughs> It's not at minus 80. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, with that, <laughs> let's move on to number four. <laughs> uh, when I did this interview, um, <clears throat> so like I said, I'm standing in for, for Zach Hurdle. And I was, the, I was interviewed back in like uh, October, I think. This one was my favorite, this number mm, four. Nice. It is the Heartbeat Pineapple Habanero. From Ontario, Canada. Mm. It comes in at 12,200 Scovilles. All right, we'll see if it's still my favorite. Definitely pineapple-y. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it too. Have you had Dirty Dick's Banana Habanero? No, I haven't. Oh, is that gosh. a good sauce too? It's kind of like this, but really yummy. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to try that. See, this is, this is why it's fun to interview somebody yeah. who knows a lot about the hot sauces <laughs> and pick which ones you, you like and tell us a little more about them. Mm. Now, I know plenty about your dissertation topic. It was titled The Role of CAMK in the Activity Dependent Regulation of GLUT4 Gene Expression. But just in case others don't, what's that all about? It's about one of the ways calcium helps you transport glucose. People use a lot of insulin in America to get glucose transported but you can get the same effect by going for a walk. This is how the muscle act, muscle contraction does the same thing insulin would for glucose transport. Wow. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a very succinct explanation yeah. of your dissertation. Yeah, my dissertation was like six pages long. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, we're on to number five. This is the Hotter Than L Ghost Sauce from Jacksonville, Florida. It comes in at 39,000 Scovilles. That's this one right here, yep. This one I, I find is a little more salsa-y than mm -hmm. the other ones. It's the number five here. Okay. You ready? Mm. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that sauce? Oh, it's great. All right. Hey, so I got another question for you. Can you bring to our level some of your top research interests and what they're about? For example, I've heard you have particularly interesting and unique views on physiology that you enjoy sharing with people. Would you share them with us? Mm, mm, I wonder which ones are fun. I guess one thing, most of my students are trying to be healthcare providers and I tell them all, you're basically veterinarians for one species. You need to learn how to, what a homo sapien is and how to treat a homo sapien. If you treat a homo sapien like some other animal, it's not going to be a healthy homo sapien. I guess that's something I say. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, what, what is your research about right now? What are you working on? I'm switching to studying more about meditation and some physiologic aspects of that. There's a particular meditation called Shambhavi Mahamudra in which within about two months of performing this meditation, people's natural levels of anandamide are four times higher, all kinds of different things, way less inflammation and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm, I mean, we could do that with athletes to see if things sped up faster, but I'm kind of more interested in the student body because there's been such increases in mental health problems ever right. since COVID. So sure. Yeah. I think it's great. That'd yeah. be real easy to do. It doesn't require any like medication or any kind of weird stuff like that. Right? No medication, so. just meditation. Excellent. Well, let's move on. We, we're halfway through. You made it halfway through. Yeah. Uh, how are you we're feeling gonna... right now? I'm feeling like we've got a lot of excitement on this back end. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to move on to number six here. This is Bravado Black Garlic and Carolina <laughs> Reaper. It's from Houston, Texas. Comes in at 70,000 Scovilles. All, All right, right, so number six here. I got it. This one's in a bathtub. Yeah, yeah. Get, get some, a lot of that good sauce on there. Runny. Yeah. Okay. Hey, cheers.
Ghost pepper and what was it? Oh, no, it's a Carolina Reaper. Good. Oh, yeah, black garlic. Black mm -hmm. garlic and Carolina Reaper. So, question. I grew about, one last year. Yeah. Carolina a Reaper. Carolina Reaper? Yeah, I grew, I only grew five peppers because I have a whole bunch. And I grew from least hot in a row to most hot. Wow. The Carolina Reaper looked evil. Yeah. It was black. Oh, my god. It gosh. was a black plant with green leaves. Oh, wow. Black stock, black arms. It was impressive. Wow. Did you, uh, did you eat any of them? I brought a bunch of peppers in here and yeah. gave them away to students and anyone who wanted them. And <clears throat> I didn't see this happen. My understanding was that someone grabbed one of the ghost peppers and ate it. Oh, my gosh. And uh, I think sort of decomposed or, you know, sort of disintegrated somewhere down the hallway. I'm not sure. Someone in the department knows better. <laughs> but apparently it was quite an outcome. Wow. Number six. That was mm is our picture this round. So we have mm. some pictures that we found of you on the internet mm. that uh, no, nothing too inappropriate or anything like that. And basically, we just want you to tell us about the circumstances of that picture. That is Dr. Andrew Creer and I. Looks like we must be at Eagle Mountain at the Overlook. Just feeling really great about ourselves. I got a lot of clothes on, so and that's usually the best place for, you know, winter-ish riding, so. Yeah, I'm having a nice chilly ride. I'll imagine my mouth's out there on these next last four. <laughs> this one looks a little more fun. Not that that wasn't fun, Andrew. Mm, I'm, I'm sure the yeah. Viking was quite fun, as we already suggested. I know. tried to get him to jump over me like this while I held a guitar, but he wouldn't do it. <laughs> so this picture here, tell us a little bit about that. My daughters and I got really into playing uh, rock band. And so this was when I got a new guitar so we could have two guitarists. So they gave me a guitar for my birthday and we rocked out. That's we fun. had a great time. All right, so our last one here does look like you're a little bit more cool on this one. So can you tell us about that one? Yeah, this is walking back from the hot springs a couple weeks ago. I didn't know if my beard would get all frozen like that. I was pretty excited to see that it does. So, <laughs> um, All right, uh, we are on number seven. Uh, this is the 13 Angry Sco Scorpions, Jekyll and Hyde. Hmm. I think it feels like, uh, you know, Jekyll when you put it in your mouth mm. and then afterwards it maybe feels like Hyde. Mm. Um, it comes in at 109,000 Scovilles, and it's from Brisbane, Australia. Mm. Well, I know most of the world's poisonous, uh, harsh things come from Australia, so. So this, this is one Looking of those. Looking forward maybe. to that. Right. Mm. All right, so. Scorpions, apparently. Make sure you get a good amount of sauce on this one. And cheers. Mine's a little smaller than yours. I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> 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 we might do a little tradesies. If I distract you, your plate might be different. Will that sit for a minute? It's going to have to. The first 12 scorpions were nice. Yeah. Is that 13th one? The angry one? I think so. Ooh. <clears throat> Notice you were kind of coughing a little bit on the last one. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> physiology is physiology. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see if i can get this question out <laughs> uh out of your many many adventures that you've had are there any that you can appropriately share with us today something that sticks out local or not just something cool well <clears throat> i think the olympic peninsula is the most beautiful place i've ever been so olympic national parks really great locally you know for wintertime fun capital reef and valley of fire are always awesome Local. Well, you know, I love to, uh, I'm from Spanish Fork, uh -huh. grew up in Benjamin, so I've been going to Diamond Fort for ages, and <clears throat> I love going up there. There's so much more at that trailhead than, I mean, the hot springs are awesome, but there's so much more there than that. I had my favorite mountain lion experience there about two years ago, where it was snowing while we were out, and we saw fresh footprints, so we knew they were like within half an hour. Sure. And we followed this mountain lion for about three and a half miles. And because that's what you do when you come across mountain Well, we were going the same direction it was. <laughs> but it was really fun because we got to see what it does, you know. We walked along the trail, but every time there's a bush, kind of sneaks over there. Thinks, is there a mouse in there I can eat? And then just keeps going. And we actually got to where it crossed the river, went underneath an overhanging bush, and was just in there. And we had to walk by, and we are like 20 feet away from it. We are just like, oh. <laughs> 
So that was exciting. Well, it apparently didn't attack you guys. So, yeah. Because you're still here. A lot not of coyote. missing any limbs or anything. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to point out that we are now at just finished sauce seven. And our guest here has yet to open a water or a milk or eat any of this bread that oh. we have here, which I think is pretty dang impressive. How's your mouth doing? It's not numb. It's not numb. <laughs> Yeah. You think you're ready for uh, number eight? Sure. All right. Sure. So number eight here. That's what we're here for. This is Dave's Gourmet Insanity Sauce from Costa Rica and then sent to California. This one like seems to be pretty well known as being pretty crazy hot. I feel like it hits different than the rest of these. You're <clears throat> in for something fun here. I guess I am too because for some reason when we decided on the format of this show, we, did, we had the interview eat the uh, interviewer eat it yeah. too. I'm going to have a word with Zach about that. So Dave's Gourmet Insanity Sauce comes in at 180,000 Scovilles. All right, let's, let's do this. Get all that sauce we <clears throat> can in there. When I first discovered very hot sauces, this is the one I discovered. Yeah? How did you feel about it? You've had it before. I would never consider drenching a wing in it. <laughs> <laughs> this one's more like put a little drop of that in your big meal and yeah. heat it up. <laughs> Like you said, though, you know, if it's not something you would do that's a little unhealthy, right, then it's not fun, right? Isn't that, what, isn't that how you said it? Well, not everything unhealthy <laughs> is fun. <laughs> All right, cheers. Thanks. Right, I know that we, had, we fried them about half an hour ago, so the chicken is pretty cold. <laughs> Which that's got to help. Yeah. I can't imagine a hot wing I don't, on yeah, top I don't, of that. I don't think I want a really hot wing on something like that. If any of you goes, go to Buffalo Wild Wings and do this, ask for cold wings. How are you doing? I'm else hot. <clears throat> I'm impressed. <clears throat> I feel like if I blew on this picture, I could melt <laughs> that guy's beard. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I contemplated, <clears throat> I contemplated before <clears throat> coming here about challenging you to see who could go the longest without water or milk. And looking at how well you're handling sauce number eight, <laughs> I think I, I would have lost that had I uh, made the challenge. Well, I, I thought we had to wait till the end. No, I, no, you I'm can, not against you can go in at any time. I'm patiently waiting for you. <laughs> okay. Ready for a question or? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> give, us a, <laughs> give us a fun fact in physiology or the exercise sciences in general, in that what is something that shouldn't be true but totally is. The more uncomfortable, the better. I give in. <laughs> well, we were talking about, if you look at cross-sectional data about people with depression who exercise, or depression and exercise, what you find is, <clears throat> you find that the people that exercise the most are usually the mo most depressed. Oh, interesting. In a large sample, and students can sometimes think, well, that doesn't look very good. But then I think it's awesome because that means people who really need that medicine are feeling it. Extra is medicine and gravitating toward it. So I think that's kind of a surprising one initially, but then awesome. If you look at a longitudinal study, of course, it always goes down. But... Mm. Never before has goat secretion felt so good in my mouth. <laughs> mm. I don't think this is goat milk. I hope not. Kind of tastes a little weird, but... I'm I sure am... that has nothing to do with what your mouth is like right now. Here's a fun fact. If you jack up your taste buds, then it might not work. <laughs> I am seriously regretting pinch hitting <clears throat> this interview. <laughs> you ready for number nine? Let's do it. <sighs> I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> There's a lot of heat in this area. That's where I'm feeling it right now. Maybe we should sing a Barry White song because we've got really hot locals. There's <laughs> <laughs> I've had the time you, of you, my you life. You can only sing five seconds of the song, otherwise we'll uh, Not get better. dinged on YouTube's uh, copyright thing. I'm going to get some ice there, too. Oh, it's not bad. Your ice helps. Yeah. You might want to try milk ice. That's a great idea. Whole milk <laughs> ice? Oh. I call them Dippin' Dots. Dippin' Dots. There you go. Ooh, I like that. Where's the Dippin' Dots? We need to do... I'm, yeah. Dippin' Dots ice cream. I like it. Number nine is the Pucker Butt Chocolate Plague from Fort Mill, South Carolina. I found out that the guy who founded the Pucker Butt Corporation is the guy who bred the Carolina Reaper. So that should tell you a little bit about 
His dedication. About his dedication. Mm -hmm. This one comes in at a whopping 690,000 oh. Scovilles. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Number nine. You ready for this? Sure. All right. Lather that puppy up. It looks like I don't have to worry about my eyes ever getting dry again. <laughs> but I'm not the only one crying. <laughs> yeah, that's just beautiful to be here. So, cheers. I think well, this my was mouth's the one. not puckering. Well, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't pucker on that direction, and. <laughs> Well, you seem to be doing pretty good, so I think we'll ask you the question here. All right. What do you do in your spare time? Give us some highlights. I <clears throat> do a lot of farm chores. Somehow I graduated from being a child with a bunch of chores to an adult with a bunch of chores. So I do a lot of chores. I like to mountain bike and hike. I like to go to concerts. And last couple of years, I really enjoy playing music with people. So I've been doing that a lot. So at the number nine question, we have a sort of rapid fire thing that we do. Rapid, rap, rapid, mm -hmm. rapid fire. You're gonna fire these rappers at each other. <laughs> Woo, fire. Oh my gosh, that'd be like the worst. Right, Throw a little hot goggles. sauce, uh, <laughs> chemical warfare. <laughs> All right, you ready for this? So I am going to ask you your favorites of several things. I'm just gonna name a thing, and you just have to rapid fire up. Rap. I said it again. Rapid. I don't yeah. know what this hot sauce is doing to my R's, but yeah, you just have to <laughs> rapid fire off whatever that you're gonna uh, go with as your favorite. So mm. favorites in these different categories. Book. <clears throat> uh, Kill a Mockingbird. Band. Sword. TV show. Seinfeld. Food. Hot wings. <laughs> <laughs> I focus more on speed than quality of answer. <laughs> Games could be board, video game, whatever. What's your favorite game? Duck, duck, goose. Duck, duck, goose. That was uh, summer, Olymp winter Olympics. <laughs> duck, duck, goose in the Winter Olympics. Well, you know, at any level, and amateurs. Any I'm excited for all duck and goose enthusiasts. <laughs> favorite U.S. city? Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's such a great answer. Favorite movie? Gattaca. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I want to think. Let's, it is a good one. Favorite movie? Mm, night Before. Okay. Gattaca. The Night Before Gattaca? That, it's the sequel? It depends or prequel. on which it's season a prequel. it is, yeah. <laughs> um, favorite sports team? Uh, Utah Jazz. There you go. Favorite country? United States. There you go. I like, I like that. that. Good answer. It's beautiful. Okay. We are on the very last chicken nugget. This is the last dab, uh, Apollo, from New York City, New York. This is made by the Heatnist. Comes in at 2.5 million Scovilles or more. Our little show here is inspired by another show on YouTube. <clears throat> and uh, this is one of their sauces. It's traditional to put a little extra dab of hot sauce right on top of the nugget oh that was a lot more than i meant to put on <laughs> all right you ready for this yeah lather that up we got our last dab. this is it it's yeah. the last one if you do this you get this beautiful trophy here if you oh. eat this last one well i can guarantee it'll make it into my mouth yeah <laughs> it's got you got to swallow <laughs> mm. all right mm. cheers How are you feeling, Ellis? <laughs> the process has begun. Well, you made it through all 10. Woo! <laughs> that is awesome. You know, when they make it through me, then I'll clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. <laughs> <laughs> and you only puckered a little. <laughs> you know my jaw? I feel like almost like I'm getting um, a tight jaw muscles. How about that? Hmm. You feeling good? Yeah. Was it as uh, spicy as you expected? Well, not yet, but yeah. I think what's really going to happen is special feelings for a while. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think I th somebody said something about eating a hot sauce that made their mouth numb. I, yeah. I think I might have hit that. 
Oh, yeah? Yeah, a little bit. I'm not... Yeah, that could have happened. That is not us. hitting me as hard as the last one. So during my postdoctoral fellowship, I tried to figure out how to make nerves grow back. It reminded me when I was a child, we used to have these uh, home teachers come to our house and tell us how to keep your feet warm in the wintertime by putting cayenne pepper in, a, in your boots. When I was older, my postdoc, and we were working on neuropathy, the Eva Feldman's lab studied that. And basically, I think what I learned during that whole phase of my life was that capsaicin will kill those small, shallow peripheral neurons. So the foot stays warm because you can't feel anything. <laughs> so our mouth stays comfortable because one of these earlier ones did the damage. I agree. Yeah. It's probably a lot harder to go straight in. We kind of built up into it. You ready for the last question? Yeah. So we've heard that you play several different kinds of instruments. Mm. We want to know first what kind of instruments you play. Drums, didgeridoo, mouth harp, uh, I sing. When my <clears throat> beautiful partner's with me and plays the harmonium, then I'll say I don't play that one. I play a number of different random items that make fun sounds. <laughs> this is my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate for a wing contest. Yeah, oh, jeez. <laughs> Hot wings. <laughs> now you can tell he has kids, but... Uh... <laughs> Do you happen to have an instrument with you for a demonstration that you totally were not asked to bring? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Just by chance. Just by chance. <clears throat> I brought two. One that my mouth wouldn't have to be very involved in, and one that my mouth would have to be really involved in. And if I don't have any neural activity, this won't sound very exciting. Oh, there we go. So is this your didgeridoo? This is a snail didge. Oh. <clears throat> um, I was expecting like a really super long yeah, one like yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah, I had this in my car. <laughs> the big one's at home. <clears throat> uh, you want to give us a demonstration? All right. It's pretty great. Yeah, thanks. So All I can say is I don't play any worse when my tongue's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's always good to know, right? Yeah. You can eat as many Just spicy in case that ever happens. as you want. <laughs> Well, that's amazing. Um, you made it through, Ellis. Woo! Throwing down 10 freaking hot sauces like it was Ow. nothing. Oh, I'd just like to thank the people who got me here, especially Dr. <laughs> Andrew Kier for nominating me. So. <laughs> because you made it through so well, we want to give you 30 <clears throat> seconds to speak your mind on anything else that you're thinking about or may want to promote. Not anything. Oh, anything? Well, <clears throat> be yourselves, folks. Uh, there's no better thing to be, and you know how to be you better than anything else. That's, that's awesome. Thank you, Dr. Ellis Jensen, everybody. Yes, the trophy. We're going to give you the trophy because you made it through all of them. That's all right. awesome. Yeah, so thanks. Let's give him another round of applause for champ. He's awesome. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, those of you that are watching on one of the YouTube channels this is posted on, please like and subscribe if you want to see more. This is great. In the next next month, we're going to have Dr. Sally Rocks uh, here. So if you guys know her, uh, she's pretty awesome, and it'll be pretty exciting. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. For